Welcome back, everybody, to Game 3 of the Losers Brackets, where we have seen Ion take Game 2 and create a 1-1 to -one gaming situation where either team has to take it in Game 3. Nada. That's true. That's true. Tensions are high as these two teams are battling it out for the last spot in that Grand Finals, fighting off against Boom. So, this time, Spade and his incredible team has the first pick and therefore the first ban. And that first ban will be the Vinny and Spike. So, no more Silence Clouds, no more Hefty Dashes in there. And um, most importantly, no more Amped Dashes. That was what got them in the last game at the very base. All right, so response ban will be Scoop. If you can't have him, ban him. All right, first pick, Nibs. Great pick. Spade and his incredible team has been using nips quite a lot, and if Ubi gets on that nips, I'm sure we'll see beautiful things happen. Responds will be Swiggins and Froggy G. Hefty combo. We have seen that in action last game, and it, you know, if it works, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Responds is Sentry and Coco, so we're looking at a nips, Sentry, Coco. Very powerful combo. You know, push people back into that black hole, have Nibs barbecue anything that comes close, and that nice end damage on the black hole as well as the Telefrag. Last pick for Ion will be Penny Fox. That being said, we are on Agion and we are ready to roll. Let's get it on. Give us a countdown. Let's get started, Nata. All right. Last game of the Losers Finals commencing in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. So, Nata, my question to you is, Spade and his incredible team, we've seen this comp before, we've seen how deadly it is, how do you think Ion is going to respond to it? I think they're going to respond with damage, lots of damage. They have that burst heavy combo, and, uh, you know, the frog, the penny, the swiggins, if you, could, if you can land the right succession of attacks, you can just go in and really do the damage to the weaker knots on the enemy team, you're going to have such an advantage because not only do you have a great initiate, you also have a great escape. And Aiden Viz is going to be burned as the entirety of Ion is going to be up in the top lane, but it seems that Dov had forgotten his upgrade and picked up Drop Anchor along with the Blue Heart Medallion after piggying. Mm. And so that's a strange pick, but nonetheless seems to be effective. With that Blue Heart Medallion, you will be able to do quite the damage and having that extra hook on, because that's something that happens when you piggy uh, often. You want to get that expensive upgrade, and you don't want to spend your money uh, from your... Uh, or you want to save money, that's what I'm trying to say, and you don't want to get that extra pickup, your second ability, because if you do that, you won't have enough money for the double piggy, but what he did was split it up, so instead of getting two stages of Blue Heart Medallion, he's going for base abilities and the Blue Heart Medallion, which will allow him to, budo to do both damage and hook people down. Now, with that, we have Dave W. playing his infamous sentry once again. If that Swiggins engages, how do you think it's going to go in a 1v1 battle of Dave W.? Well, but we see Spade, Spade actually oh, getting wow. a lot of damage taken on him. He's going to escape with a quarter of a bar and just barely survive. But in a 1v1 situation, Dave W. versus Dob, who do you think would take it? Obviously, it's a Swiggins. He does have the upper hand, being able to anchor in, deal that crazy amount of damage. But... I don't know, Dave W, his yeah, sentry is awesome. It is, and it's a very conditional fight you're setting up here. Is the black hole up, yes or no, because it all comes down to if he can get him on the rebound, he will take a lot of damage, and if he doesn't die by the first strike... But Dave W is taking a huge anchor shot, and he's going to be hunted down by Robbie. Robbie getting too far into the sun, he is going to get burned, as mm. Nibs will pick up, uh, excuse me, Spade will pick up Robbie, but due to the assist from the fire on Ubi. That was a close call. You could see everyone on Spade and his incredible team was extremely low. No one was, like, that was one NATO tick, I'd say. And unfortunately, Frog was also one tick of everything away from dying. And that one tick, it comes down to one tick because in this type of comp for Ion, you can one tick someone out very quickly and very easily. Oh, definitely. And, you know, again... Spade and his incredible team has a has a very conditional comp. Is the fire out? Is the blaze out? Is the shield for the black hole charge out? You know, all these things come into play when you decide whether or not you should engage. And, you know, one thing that I have to comment on is the Nibs pick. We've seen Ubi play Nibs before, and 
in the hands of someone like Ubi, Nibs is absolutely terrifying. Comparative to the pick of the Frog and the Penny, who end the excuse me, Swiggins, who are very close quarters combat characters, Nibs is going to deal a lot of damage if all, the entirety of Ion groups up and clumps up. You're right, and, you know, Mokno's Frog is deadly, and combine that with the entirety of Ion, you know, you have a lot of damage going on. And a lot of damage that is being dealt by Ion on the counterattack as they were able to pick up Spade. All right, kills are one to one, four minutes in, and I think Iron is looking to get a little push in on bottom lane. And they will be able to do so or not. Robbie notices his health bar isn't at where he wants it to be, and he will retreat back and grab some health. He's also got 220 solar, so he will pick up one stage of Bug Jars opting for damage on pulse as opposed to silence on pulse early on. Mm -hmm. The actual, I think the recipe he's following is damage plus range, add in silence, you got that, you got that winning penny pulse. And using it as, um, you, you can sort of position yourself in a way that allows you to initiate after the initiation has happened. So, imagine, you know, there's a travel time on Swiggin's hook, and if you can be, in, for instance, up in the hiding area, go in above the enemy, shoot down while the hook is traveling, uh, and in an instant, you know, do a double initiation and really just do that damage, the pulse damage plus the amplification, and in later stages of the game, we have that silence playing in as well. And silence, as we said, silence versing a sentry is extremely terrifying. As a sentry, you don't want to get caught by that silence, unable to charge or release your black hole or teleport. You're basically a sitting duck. You are. And I keep wanting to say Silence Cloud, because we've been seeing quite a lot of Vinnies, but luckily for Spaden's incredible team, they were able to ban it. And Ion will pick up another kill on the bottom as Spade is taken out by the entirety of Ion. Ubi was forced to retreat back, leaving Spade to help him, and he went down at the same time. They've been really good at capitalizing on these moments, I think, Ion, so far. They absolutely oh, have been that. good, and look at that! In a quarter of a second, that reaction time from both team members, extremely strong, and they were able to pick up another kill. Ion takes the kill lead 3-1. to one. That's pretty good, and they're now pushing on bottom lane, just doing a little push blast style. Blast style with his frog. That is correct. We've seen it earlier. He pushed by himself and was able to get the turret down to a half of a bar, allowing his team to take that a little bit earlier than expected. Dave W., up top with Spade and Ubi, he's got that Telewar there. That's been the spot to put it in for Dave W. Every single time we've seen his sentry, he's placed it in that exact same spot. Having the vision up there is crucial because that is where the most ganks happen as you can you know, collapse on an entire team rather than a bottom where it usually is only one knot you get at a time. This is the team setup. This is the team wipe setup. And they know that. They are ready for it. With Nibs Invis, I don't know how long Ion can, you know, stay back without being tempted to go forward. And that temptation is exactly what could kill them in the long run. If Spade, Ubi, and Dave W can wait them out and bait their abilities, they'll be able to take them out very quickly as opposed to Ion's very quick bursty comp. This is a continuity on... Spade and his incredible team, they have the ability to get this crazy amount of damage out in a short period of time, but they also have the ability to deal that damage and go with laning as Dave W is playing his sentry, and sentry is a huge laning character. You need him to close down a lane, no problem. And it seems that Dob was caught in the top area of that black hole, right at his turret, but able to escape and pick up health. Hmm... Looking at the builds here, and quite a few piggies are coming out on Spaden's Incredible Team. They know they're a bit behind, so getting that extra DOT for both piggies will help them get back in the fight. I agree 100%. Chuck's board and Eternal Flame, those upgrades coming out for Coco and Nibs, will allow them to deal that extra DOT, as you'd stated, and really kind of continue their poke. Mm, poke is... I think not as important as could be versus other comps. You have two potential lifesteal characters with Nibs as, you know, the one, the odd one out, but still then you have the easy escape from the from the orb and 
I think they, they'd rather just kill them than poke them down and try to zone them back. I think that's what Ion should do, just, just kill them. Well, that's what any team should do in this tournament. Kill the other team and take down those turrets and proceed to the core. And, I mean, we're at the Grand Finals, so both of these teams have fought for 12 weeks, 3 months, in effort to be here today and compete. And they've mm -hmm. done just that. There's a reason that these teams are here. And it's because they're good teams. They've played, they've fought, and they've fought hard. And that's why they are here. That's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, as you said, they are fighting for a spot in the Grand Finals. And this is the game to decide who goes on to fight for that first place. You know, this this is really tense. This is nerve-wrecking. I, I, I keep looking for more words to sort of just describe this pressure that, that the players are experiencing. And these players have been playing for two days straight, multiple hours a day, going over comps. And, you know, I spoke to teams earlier on last night as we finished the cast yesterday. And Robbie looks like he's going to be in trouble. Excuse me, uh, Mokno. Robbie is in the top lane. He will land the double pulse dove in there as well. And he will allow Mokno to get away safely and defend in the top lane. But I was speaking to these teams last night, a few members of each team. And they were telling me that they were watching matches and watching replays, doing their homework and tactically picking out picks and bans for these matches. So to see these picks and bans, the drafts are a huge important factor of this, of these games today. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like the hidden hero here, you know, drafting means so much, but you never really see it until after the game is done, you know. Having the team that allows you to fight is, is the most important. If you feel your team is not able to do things, that is because your draft is either not good enough or you're being outplayed on a massive scale and it's most likely the drafts at this, at this level i agree 100 percent with you all of these teams are basically evened out as far as skill goes so the drafts the draft session is one of the biggest factors at this stage of the tournament oh yes and that is why it is important to do your homework as you stated earlier we see the small push the black hole being landed and a huge fire it being hit on Dov, a lot of his health taken out by that ball and fire from Ubi. Alright, and speaking of Ubi, Ubi is now in this, which will let him set up quite the deadly trap if he gets caught, or he gets anyone close enough to him, or Dave W gets a nice black hole off. And the top turret is going to be brought down to one bar, and Dov will go down, taken down by Ubi, I believe that was the DOT. And he will pick up a stage of regen to combat that. He says, I've died once before to that. I do not like it. I could have survived if I had one stage of region and he picks it up. You know, those, I think, I, I like to call that the rage region because you are so annoyed that you died to DOT, perhaps you're just, you know, that one second away from the health pack or the creep, you know, the creep health just doesn't quite get to you and then you get regen just because you're not letting this happen again that is a rage region not to say that's not smart but I like to call it the rage region but that one stage will potentially save him in those DOT kill situations the top turret has been taken down and that is the first turret down in favor of Spade and his team, Ubi will get caught by the anchor of Dob, the pulse missing all members of Spade and his incredible team as we see the super droid up top get taken out very quickly as Team Ion realizes it. Yeah, they did a good job of guarding it all the way up until that point though. Oh, the silence! Good job, and the silence coming oh, the out, big hole. and Dave W is going to land a huge black hole on Robbie and Magno. They are both going to get taken down by the entirety of Spade and his team, and it looks like they're going to proceed to the second turret and try and deal some damage on that, as Dov is going to be forced to defend. We see Spade up top clearing the top lane and land a huge ball, and he is going to pick up Dov, getting the no-clip ball DOT kill. Huge! Huge plays by Spade and his team. Definitely. They have changed it up. We saw Team Ion pick up those early kills, getting a 3-1 to one lead. And now we've seen Spade and his team making a 5-3 to three kill difference. And they are scaring that turret out of existence on the minimap, although it is still just barely alive. You can sneeze on it and it will go down. Exactly. 
But one thing that I wanted to discuss was Ion going back to their burst comp against this type of team, getting snared by Dave W is going to play a huge factor if they get caught in those black holes. That's basically going to be a secured counter kill in favor of Spade and his team if Dave W can land a, even a one charge black hole at this stage of the game. Uh, you know, we're almost 14 minutes in. Builds are coming, or I should say, are looking like they're being finalized in the direction that I think they're going. And it's a lot of damage that's going to be output by Spade and Ubi, even on a one bar charge. Then again, we look at Team Ion. Tell us what they have. Well, Ion really relies on this heavy pulse Swiggins initiate. I think with with the pulse and the hook synchronized, Frog has an easy time going in, get a double, get a, get a triple. Um, just because of that piercing, you know, dash going through everything and anyone. And having that setup is really the most, in thing, most important thing. Ion relies on setups, and they have to do them themselves. They can't wait for it, because if they wait for it, Dave and... Uh, Dave and company, Spade, Ubi, all the guys will be ready for it and they'll be able to counteract as, uh, you know, appropriately. And the silence has landed. We see the engagement begin. Ubi tries to get that last take of fire out. Will deal just enough damage for Spade to pick up Robbie in a one for one. And those are the situations where cooldown ball would be nice to have because that way you could end the game or the battle before you lost the nod. And, you know, I think he might just opt for it uh, later in the game. Hmm, I think it's dependent, because at this point, I think damage on the ball. He's going to continue along that side of the build, where he has his damage, he has Heavenly Fire. So, Speedball, you don't really need it at this point. So, actually, you know what, I would be inclined to agree with you that cooldown ball might be the best option, considering that they're going to be snared into the black hole anyway. Yeah, and, you know, with Knockback, you are kind of playing against that whole purpose. And going back to this kind of clearing phase that we see from both of these teams, they have to be very cautious of when they go for lane changes. Getting well, caught out of a lane change can be the difference between a kill and a death. Frog going in, Machno dealing a lot of damage, Robbie landing the double pulse, Spade is going to be trying to duke it out, Dov is going to be a little bit out of position, Machno trying to get in there to save him, he will be able to as Ubi is anchored down by Dov and now is on the run as the teleport orb from Nibs bounces off the bottom of the wall and will allow him to escape. But D.O.T. coming out and killing Robbie, and Spade will pick up another kill. The anchor is going to be nullified by the teleport on Nibs as a one-for-none occurs, and Robbie will be eliminated from the map. That is true. And you can see g -Dub actually countering Nibs by getting that uh, pneumatic spoon because even though Nibs can negate the hook, it's still she still will take the break damage, and therefore you can guarantee damage by getting the Pneumatic Spoon. And once he finishes up his build of Pneumatic Spoon, gets the third stage of it, that's 300 break damage, so he's going to be dealing his anchor damage, his drop anchor damage, as well as break damage. Him touching you with that anchor is going to be dealing close to 700 even if not more. I believe it's going to be a little bit more than that because it'll also pick up Pool Boy at some point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the potential here is immense. Look at, for instance, the milk card. You can get the Amplify, uh, Bohemian, skilled mil Bohemian Skimmed Milk, if I'm not mistaken. You'd be correct. Okay, yeah. Well, that'd be another 20% of damage. Just and as they start that engagement, once more, Dave W having a lot of damage dealt to him. Spade is going to be on the run. Robbie taking oh, a huge wow. chunk of DOT, but he will be able to pick up Spade with the uh, back away pulse, and he will retreat back as well as Dov and Makno, who will have to be forced to defend against a three droid push up top that shaved off a few bars of the top turret. Mm -hmm. That, as I said, the recipe for a good, r uh, not a rift, sorry, a pulse, will be that range, silence, and damage. All these things coming into play when you're just when you just need a team fight done and dealt with. And that is exactly it. Done and dealt with. Pool boy can be done and dealt and deal with things very quickly as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to seeing when he's getting it because I just imagine that being such a powerful upgrade against Nibs. Nibs thinking, oh, I have the advantage. I'm gonna fire breath, and Swiggins just comes flying in. Nope. You don't, and he smacks you in her face. Smacks her in the face with a giant anchor. 
And not only will that anchor deal damage, but it will secure you and hook you down so that the entirety of your team can get in there quickly and pick up the kill. And should Nibs try to teleport out, you do have that Nomadic Spoon. And for, you know, hopefully in the future as well with uh, Amplify. Amplify, you know, we, we talk about that a little bit. We see the amp on Penny as a base, but it is an upgrade that you do have to buy for Swiggins. But two Amplifies on a target, which is going to be close to 30 or 40% amp, that is absolutely insane. And imagine being pool boyed with that kind of thing. I mean, sure, um, you're not going to get the full anchor swing, but still, the AA would hurt. The AA, and if you have your entire team with you, think of a medical pump clunk oh, wow. with full pills. The potentials. It's going down. Yeah. Dave W. launched the black hole, not able to hit anybody with that. Dom being nimble and getting out of it very quickly will hit the anchor on Ubi. And Dave W. in for the rescue, looking to deal some damage as he will get into the fray, launching his one bar black hole, not able to land anybody in. And Spade is going to get caught out of position and quickly picked up by Robbie and Makno. Makno is retreating back. He will pick up some health. Dave W. with a huge charge, but he's going to be silenced. And here comes Ubi in for the kill. Oh. But wait, no, there's more. That is going <laughs> to be a team wipe as all members nice. of Spade and his team have been wiped. And that will be the first team wipe that we've seen in this game so far. Nearly 20 minutes in as Dob will clear bottom. Makno will clear top. And they will try and get these turrets taken down you can see coco spade is dropping she has touched down but i don't think that uh, that'll be enough time to get in there i think they have this turret on bottom it's going down it's going down it is taken down that top turret still has a little bit less than half health but all three members of spade and his incredible team are back on the map i don't know if it'll be in time for them to prevent this top turret from being taken down it will it's two and a half bars that's, that's not a lot. I mean, 20 minutes in, we're looking at something that could end very soon if they get in and do the right things. You know, wipes or double kills suddenly mean a whole lot more now. A wipe can end the game for either team at this stage of the game. A wipe for Ion could mean them progressing. A wipe for Spade and his team could mean them progressing into the finals. Oh, look, at, look, at, look at the dance up there. <laughs> As they dance around Dave Brilliant. W. And Brilliant display of sportsmanship. They're both trying to bait the other, ending up in a ritual dance. The ritual dance of kills as they both try and create them. As Ubi is going to get thwarted back, Dave W is going to be anchored down. He'll be taking that break damage, but not before he gets a huge charge off. Trying to predict his black hole, and it will not hit as Ubi and Spade get back to the bottom lane duking it out with Robbie. Makno picking up the health and trying to get out. He does manage to get out without dealing any bar damage, or excuse me, charging any bars of Dave W, but a huge ball will hit Robbie to the face. He'll be forced to retreat back. Oh, and suddenly the tides have turned once again. This is, you know, the, the waters are changing all the time. The, the gravity situation, low tide, high tide, both of these teams, they're, they're fighting for the tides, and they're they doing are. just that. We've seen a team wipe for Spade, or a team wipe for Ion, I should say, and they came right back and repositioned themselves right where they were right before the team wipe. Mm, that's true. And I think right now we're looking at so many pills in the build that... It, it all comes down to who can do the damage the quickest. I mean, both teams have damage, both teams have HP, and, uh... And both teams are going in as Ubi is going to get taken down once more. A two for none. Dave W is on the run. Dob has to try and predict the teleport. A two for one. Dave W is on the run. Wow, that rhymed. I didn't even mean to do it. But either way, Ion will take the top turret and even up the turret count at two to two. And now they've actually also taken the lead in kills by two. So, oh, should I say in the Alienware Awesome Cup 2? Can we keep going with the numbers? Uh, we're... Yeah, I got nothing. But oh, <laughs> we're in game three. This, yeah, this could have been avoided. I thought, 
I thought we would be in game two, but I just remembered where we were. And we're going to see that ball land on Dov as he's going to be forced to retreat back. Mokno waiting to pick up Invis, trying to save some time. And Spade and his incredible team know that he has Invis. They're going to go back to their cautious gameplay and wait for Invis to burn. And G Dove is actually utilizing this going back, not um, while uh, Spade and his incredible team are back as well, allowing him to get a free turn back without losing any ground on map. That is correct, and feening how many people you have on map is another great strategy that we do touch up on from time to time. But if you have two people on the map, if you can fiend that you have that third person on the map, have him teleport back and get an upgrade, you will be able to continue to hold that midsection without forfeiting any ground. And you can do the opposite by faking that you you are only two players on, on map currently, forcing a team fight that you then have the engage advantage in. As we see Dave W going back to his zoning gameplay, creating that barrier of damage that if any member of Ion passes through, they will be dealt a lot of damage. Dov will pick up Invis this time around in an attempt to set something up, and we can see the entirety of Spade and his team retreat back, but not in time. Dave W is going to get picked up. An excellent Invis, but Ubi will pick up Robbie at the same time in return, and we will see that DOT be able to pick up another kill. And we saw the silence just play into effect there. Dave W was a sitting duck. He could not fire his hole, even though he had a max charge going. And damage being dealt across the board. Spade will be a bar and a half as we see Makno retreating back as well. I think he's keeping the offensive for now. They want to not lose ground right now. It's so important they keep their footing. They can't afford to. I mean, they have really turned things around once again and proceeded where Spade and his team were on the opposite side of the map. So losing ground at this point would mean forfeiting mid and potentially forfeiting the next invis. Well, they do have the invis. They're guarding it closely as they are waiting for a Mokno to get back and grab it. Or perhaps let Swingens have it. There you go. Swingens is going to take it in an effort to set up another kill with the anchor, allowing Penny to go in for the silence and we see Spade and his team once more retreat back, playing very cautiously and defensively. Dave W trying to be bait, and Dov will not take it, noticing his team is not in the position to do that. He will go in. Dave W will get a two-bar charge. Something you can do with Invis is that you pretend your Invis teammate is still around you and move in very aggressively while the Invis teammate moves on to a new position and takes the enemy by surprise. That is something that is a rather advanced strategy, but it works out well if you can, you know, execute it properly. And that comes with communication and practice as well. Knowing where your teammates are in relation to you, having that map awareness is extremely important at this level of play. Mm -hmm. You know, if and if you if you become a great actor in astronauts, you will you will go far. You will do a lot of cool things that you never thought was possible. Invis is up once again. It seems that Dov will pick it up. The black hole just missing. And we will see Robbie clear up this top lane. Dov going to the bottom lane. Or excuse me, going to the creep section with Invis once more. Spade and his team going to play very cautiously as they know that someone is Invis. And Dov will burn the Invis and he will be hunted down by the entirety of Spade and his team. But that's not to say that Makno will be there for the escape. Robbie as well. And that shield on the frog is just so powerful against a nibs it's a great counter to it sure is Bausch and we're looking at this push right now and I think if Ion you know do what they've been doing so far just collapse on one target while they never right there just just out of range or so they think I think they can defend very well but otherwise they are really in a bad spot when Dave comes in with those big black holes He'll be in there. Those black holes are going to be charged up very highly if he is able to soak up that damage. And being able to snare down all three members of Ion after they utilize their abilities is definitely going to be a kill. Yep. And uh, Mokno opting for um, the boombox rather than tweeters for the damage on NATO. Interesting as Dave W will clear up the top lane along with Spade and Ubi and Invis should be up shortly 
and I believe it's going to go to Spade and his incredible team at this point. They've pushed back Ion, and they're really going to start focusing on getting these pushes down. Makno getting into the fray once more is going to be dealt a lot of damage, as well as dealing a lot of damage to Ubi on the bottom lane, but the health packet is up. He will pick that up as we go back to Spade and his team clearing out the lanes. And I just figured out why Mokno opted for the Boombox. Of course, when Nibs is going into flame mode, he wants to have that DPS to sort of respond, you know, damage v damage. Find an equilibrium. And Dov will be defending the bottom lane as Mokno will pick up that HP. And Dave W, Spade, and Ubi are back into that creep zone and are able to switch up very quickly. This is the time that they need to set themselves up with a push. They can't really hesitate. All these players are fatigued. They've been playing yesterday and all of today for so far. And Ubi is going to teleport away, taking that damage from the anchor break. And Dov will pick his anchor back up. But these teams really need to try and focus on setting up pushes for themselves. They really need to do exactly that. And the entirety of Spade is going back right now. They are just waiting for it. For some reason, they are allowing Ion to get complete map control. And I'm not sure if that is smart 30 minutes into a game, but we'll see what they have in mind. Controlling that mid and having that invis available to you at the late stages of the game is extremely important. And Dov is going to get sucked back in by the black hole, and he will get picked up by Ubi. Robbie is in a bad situation as he will easily just run away, dash away. But Dave W putting himself in the middle of it all with the teleport back in and Robbie is going to be continuing to try and escape from Spade, Ubi and Dave W. It looks like he will as he is being very nimble with his penny. I was about to say, what do you mean trying? He's clearly got these people right where they want, he want them. But now, oh wow, that is one aggressive penny we got going here. And the aggressiveness is that st type and style of gameplay that we're going to see occur in at these late stages of the game builds are almost maxed out and you know in about 500 solar for each team member on all teams builds will be maxed out that's where kills start to mean more and more because now it's not the actual solar gain the monetary gain of getting the kill it is the lack of defense that is going to be the deciding factor of this game and we see the engagement start. Mokno having to run away is going to just <laughs> NATO right out of the black hole with the turbo tape. He will be able to do so. That is, and we uh... see Spade getting absolutely assaulted. And will Ubi, Ubi does manage to teleport away, but not before Spade is picked up. And Robbie will pick up the kill on that. The kill differential is two kills. Solar difference is roughly three to four hundred throughout all members of all teams and we've seen ion retake control of spades creep zone it's been very back and forth in this game mm -hmm. you know this is this is basically a culmination of game one and two both teams know what they're in for both teams are playing with everything they got as you said they are tired they are fatigued yet they are pressing through with everything they have and we have to commend these players for being able to do so. Playing knots for an extended period of time like this, especially with tournament play, is a very difficult feat. But these players seem to know what they're doing and continue to play with the high intensity that they've been playing with for the last three months. Exactly. And, you know, builds are coming into place here. Teleburst are coming out slowly on Dave W. We're seeing the circuits of time coming out. We have the speedball for Spade, so guessing we were both wrong in a sense. Although you did call that it was a possibility. And I think, you know, the gyro ball, as you said, would have been a little bit of a better upgrade. Get those pokes in a little bit more often, reducing the cooldown on ball. And it would really just kind of instate the fact that they're going to continue to chip away at Team Ion, whether it be with a ball, whether it be with a black hole, or whether it be with the fire. They are just going to continue to do so. And you can see Dave W actually focusing on building his bulk, getting that extra shield, the microfilm, just extra 20% shield on top of his, uh, his existing 20% shield. So 40% shield, that's a lot of shield absorption going on. He can really just be a sponge at this point. And a sponge he will be. That shield is definitely going to allow him to do even more than he's already been doing. We see that pulse land on Spade. Spade is going to have to retreat back. 
and pick up health very quickly. He does so. And Dave W launching the black hole. Now is the time they need to be engaging. They've separated Ubi and Dave W. And it was the time they engage as Makno picks up the kill on Ubi. If you can separate your opponent, that's the time when you engage, especially if they're off cooldowns. And you can see the clone actually hiding down there in the bottom lane. If oh wow, we have a game, we have a game going on here. And it looks like Spade will be trying to escape the wrath of Team Ion as oh, he does so, but ball. the ball snipe will pick him up from the bottom lane as Spade makes his way out, making the best out of a bad situation. Will pick up a frog on his way back to the shop. Dave W has a huge black hole, manages to land it on Dob, and will pick up another kill as Spade gets that ball in, dealing the extra amount of damage that will allow Dave W to get the kill as well. Oh man, and uh, now the damage over time on Anchor, so the Magnetic Anchor coming out from Swiggins, no Amplify, strangely enough. Not just yet, I can see it coming out in a few seconds though. Oh, actually, no, he can't. As you said before, he's got the magnetic anchor. I think that's just to really instate the fact that if he gets onto you, he's going to poke you, and it's going to hurt, and it's going to continue to hurt no matter what happens. I only see it being effective versus Coco, though, which is why I'm a bit curious as to why he did it. And all members of Team Ion will defend as Spade has kind of retaking control of the midsection of the map and they will push themselves into the creep zone if ion allows them to but they should not securing invis this late in the game is going to be a huge factor and robbie going for it robbie manages to get it but he will burn it on his escape and we see Magno trying to get into the bottom lane, getting body blocked and getting a huge oh. teleport hit on him. Dave W, but the DOT no. is going to oh. pick him up. Ubi will pick up the kill on Magno, and we will see a 2v3 at this stage in the game. A single kill can be the difference between a turret. And I just feel like I'm seeing the game speed just go up as Dave and Spade and Ubi and everyone just going. They move quicker. They are in for this. They want to go straight for the turret. They want to hit where it hurts the most. Just go hard in, but the pulse seems to negate that. And it's a great back off strategy. You know, using the pulse on your escape will secure your safety if you can land that silence pulse. And Robbie's been doing that at a lot of the points during this game. It is, and I, I think that that last kill sort of. That was sort of the kicks, that's the flame, the spark. Right now things are going into motion. And going into motion they are as Dave W is going to get picked up by Makno. Ubi wasted his teleport, he's going to have to escape from all three members of Ion. Oh. He's get picked up by the pulse that no clips through. This has been a back and forth game for 36 minutes. Spade has to defend against all three members of Team Ion. Those no clips, all everything, and Dav is going to get picked up by the knockback of the That's a turret ball. down. And the third turret goes down in favor of Team Ion. And they're going to proceed to do core damage as well. They're going in for the core. They burn it down to a corner. Spade is back on map. Dave W is back on map. And Spade is going to nimbly escape with two bars of HP. Will heal up quickly. Dave W now on the offensive. Oh, man. I think we're going to see a bit more of a lockdown here coming from Spade. On these high stake matches, you tend to see people go a little more defensively than usual. So I think we're going to see a lot more lockdown, trying to bait Ion into going for the aggressive plays, going for that tempting base, half HP, and they're going to take them out and rush straight for their base. I think that's what the plays are at. That's the stakes right now. And the stakes are very high. This is for a position to be competing against Boom in the finals of the Alienware Awesome Cup 2. This is the third game, people. A win for either team will bring them up to face Boom. And a loss will unfortunately remove the other team from the competition. And they will take third place. Not to say that is not impressive, not at all. It is very, very well done. These team have done teams have done excellently so far. And this is now the sorting process to find the cream of the crop. And as you said, this is basically the final product of
three months of play as Ubi's brought down to a few bars. Oh. Robbie's brought down to a few oh. bars, and Makno is gonna look for the kill as Ubi is gonna pick up health, but he realizes that he can easily get taken out in one teleport and will retreat back, pick up some creep health along with Dom. And we're looking at full slow, no, not full slow, sorry, but a fully upgraded um, disruptor coming out from Coco, so that is that is a very, very huge amount of slow coming out for that. Will apply to both the blaze ball as well as the blaze itself. And if he picks up that, uh, he, actually he can at this point in the game, but I was saying if he picked up that 300 solar upgrade for increased slow, that ball is going to just be terrifying, even if it passes by you and doesn't yeah. hit. It will shut down Penny's jumps for good because they're so tiny and the slow will negate jumping as well. That is just going to absolutely demolish it and the dash range as well will be reduced. And that top turret is not looking so hot for Spade and his team. It's about a bar and a quarter compared to the other two turrets on the other side, which are both about a quarter. That is one bar now. Well, that is one froggy dash. If he is, if he is feeling lucky, he could go for it. He could do it right now. It's his, his fingers on the trigger right now. It's that's that's all. The fingers on the trigger, but they're going to pick up Invis and opt for Invis instead, as they could potentially go in on Ubi at the current moment, land that pulse, have him have all members, that being Dob and Makno, just dive into that turret, and they are just going to go and turret dive, and they will be able to pick up that final turret, as all turrets have been destroyed, the paths have been paved, Robbie is going in, landing the pulse. Mokno going in, but the silence teleport by Dave W is going to push Mokno away, and he will retreat to pick up some health, and we have reached the final stages of upgrades in this game, as builds have finally, or more they or less, have, been completed. They have locked down Frog now getting the last AA upgrades, Penny locking down her AA as well. You know, last upgrades coming out for Anchor. We're actually not fully maxed on Anchor yet. We can We are. We're looking for one more upgrade, and that'll be it. And the entirety of Ion once more in that creep section. We've seen Spade and his team on the opposite side of the map in the same position, but with both turrets still up. They've brought both both of those down to about a quarter bar of health, as compared to the no turrets that they have now. Hmm. This, this has been, you know, I think this is basically your smack game one and two together, same length, same plays, everything. One could say, well actually, as you said before, you smack together all these games and this is basically the conclusion of it. This is the final result of these three months of gameplay coming down to this match for one of these teams. That is as true as Dave W going to play his zoning defense once more, trying to bait out. And it seems that Spade is going to start that engagement. Oh. Spade will escape with one health, the teleport coming out, and the fire and the black hole will pick up Dom. Oh, Magna this going could to be it for Ion. Down. This could be it. It this could, could be, be it. it, but it could also be for Spade and his team if they pick up another kill. Dave W looking to secure a kill on either Robbie or Makno. Makno will burn Invis, it seems, or he'll wait for Invis. No, he decides to opt to pick it up instead and will retreat back after picking up those two new those two creeps as Robbie will be in the bottom jungle with Spade. I'm just I'm just holding my breath right now. There is there's very little to be said right now. Well, this is the pride of Ion and the pride of Spade and Ubi and Dave W duking it out for supremacy and a position to pe to compete with Boom and both teams have been playing amazingly this has been a back and forth match we've been in it for 42 minutes a span of 31 kills and over 18,000 solar almost nearly 21,000 solar actually just looking at these numbers 21,000 solar 31 kills and 42 oh. minutes and a huge engagement starting Dave W having to escape Magno having to escape and it looks like Dov will go and get taken down by Ubi at the same time DOT still dealing damage to Magno as Robbie teleports away on bottom right this is the this is the time where Spade and his team just needs to go in go 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 but they have to be careful that pulse dash will take them out 
and as we see that pulse silence out dave w dave w is going to be forced to go back spade is now going to be duking it out with makno makno opts for the dash away and putting himself in the creep zone as robbie will miss his pulse but clear the droids on bottom oh wow all right swiggins is back in play that is correct. Swiggins is back, and the entirety of Spade and his team have gone and did what Ion did just before, take control of mid and proceed into that creep section. The certs still have a, a quarter bar of health left on each one. Robbie's going to take a ball as Dave W continues his zoning game, and Davin Magno will remain on map until Robbie can get back. This is, this is heart pounding right now. Either team can take this in a blink of an eye. Turrets are nothing anymore. They're just obstacles in the way. This, if someone dies, everything goes. This is where we're at. A single kill, that is correct, Nat. A single kill can secure victory for either team. Dave W, using his teleport, will charge his black hole, not able to make anything of it, but will waste it in attempt to get another black hole at a later stage in time and recharge it against Team Ion. You can just, like, the way the players are moving around, this is, like, you can almost feel the shaking of everything, you know, the controlled breathing. We are we're in the moment right now. This is the, like, the entire three months boiled down to two minutes. Maybe less. I don't know. And a huge kill engagement starting. Robbie will pick up Spade. Dave W will pick up Monkno. And Team Ion is looking to deal some core damage. Robbie's going to go in, but... Dov is back. Robbie knows he's back. He needs to get away. He will bait out the fire and teleport away. That was one kill for each team, equalizing the situation. Oh, wow. I have no words. If that went any differently, either team could have taken victory. I, I see no way that could have, you know, gone well if not had not been an exchange. Dave W going back to clearing up as Robbie and Dov into the creep section once more of Spade and his team. And I have to commend both teams. They've done an incredible job of picking up kills and defending. All right, I think we're looking for it. This is it. Half base. The last attack. It has started. It has begun, and Dov is going to be silenced. He is going to get picked up by the Ubi's fire, and we're going to observe Robbie and Magno both retreat as they know they need to defend and they need to do it well because Spade and his team are clearing these lanes very quickly and are going to reset the map. There's about 20 or excuse me, 15 seconds left before Dov is on map, 10 seconds in the drop pod and his actual respawn timer. But both of these teams, high octane gameplay. They have been back and forth for 46 minutes straight. No breaks, no intermissions, no timeouts, no questionable calls by the referees because there are no referees. And both of these teams are going to try and secure their wins. As we see the right, fire engagement start, we see the triple pulse land. And Ubi's going to be very weak. He's going to teleport away. Dave W's going to pick up Makno. And we see Robbie and Dov retreat to defend once more. There's the pulse. And another kill. Spade is going to be picked up. And Ubi is going to be on the run. Team Ion is looking to pick up a kill on Ubi. Ubi goes down. Dave W will run away to defend against a half core versus Dov and Robbie. They are pushing for it. Dave W is going to get anchored down, held down. And he is going to get picked up. And there is no way. That, that is game. Spade and Ubi and Dave W can come back from that. And that is game. As Team Ion proceeds to the finals, taking on Team Boom. 47 that minutes later, 39 kills over 22,000 solar. Or 21,000 solar. We have finally found a victor, that being Team Ion. This is what happens when two teams refuse to give up. And... This is it. I mean, three months later, we're going to go into the grand finals after a quick break.